How did I get here? I got here uh, in a complete fluke. My husband was transferred down to Houston and I was three credits short of finishing a master's degree at Creighton University. They told me go to Rice, take three credits. Transfer it up, we'll stamp, we'll stamp your papers. One of the luckiest breaks of my life is the three credit, credit class that I signed up for was John Bowles' History of the American South. 30 years later, I am still here and I have a PhD in the History of the American South. This is my favorite picture of him, right? 50 years ago, John F. Kennedy came here to this stadium and gave a speech that changed the course of America's space program. That's actually a nice picture. I am the centennial historian of Rice University, a job that didn't exist when I got here and probably won't exist after I'm gone. What have you got the there? Map. The map. <gasps> but which has been one of the most exciting and interesting and even wild adventures of my entire life. Today is my last day and I still have stuff to do. Um, I have projects, long-term projects that I'm still working on, and I need to get into the Woodson where we have a skeleton staff in operation during this pandemic. Um, and I can go in there, I can go in the back of the Woodson and be by myself and uh, start opening up the boxes I need for my next project. Where are we? Where are we indeed? We're back by the scrapbooks. That's where we are. We're back by the scrapbooks. The history of the early institute, I mean, to get the feel for it, what it really felt like, what it was really like to be here, right, to be a student here, that comes straight out of the scrapbooks. I mean, I thought I was a library mouse, right, that I, I, I sit back in the corner of the archives all alone by myself day in and day out. I never expected to be the person who gets the phone calls and the text messages saying, uh, what's going on with this? How did this happen? Um, I need data about that. Um, what's the history of room and board charges at Rice? Um, uh, but I've been able to help people in different departments, different parts of campus, and even off campus. She's a free spirit. You know, she's hardworking and curious and uh has a good mind and so she and she was an ideal person i mean i don't i don't think anyone started out with a kind of a precise job description i mean when she was appointed the rice historian i don't think anyone knew exactly what she would do or how she would do it or in what form her historical research would would take but she it just sort of happened and just developed began a life on its own well, if you look back from 100 years from now and look back at what my main contribution has been, I think it's probably been the Rice History Corner blog. It only became clear to me, you know, after six or seven months, how that blog could be used to um, preserve the history of the people who were here who are now gone. One of the lucky things was that as soon as I started working on Rice History, I began talking at great length with the oldest people around. They knew stuff I didn't know, so I forged these really wonderful friendships. They're all dead now. All my friends are dead. <laughs> the more I can get into that blog, right, the more the institution's story, biography, it's a biography of a university. It's a haphazard history of Rice University and haphazard is the way history actually works, right? We impose these narratives on it, but really it's just a free-for-all.